Should it take cancer to teach you how to live? Nobody was more surprised than me when I opened my mouth to tell my partner of eight years that I wanted to quit my job, and the words that came out of my mouth were, I don't think we should live together anymore. And I was shocked, and his eyes got really wide, and there was this pause. And then he said, well, Paula, if that's the way you feel, then we shouldn't be. And at that moment, it was like this thousand pound weight had been lifted off my back. And somehow, my heart knew that we were not meant to be together anymore long before my brain had even considered that possibility. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have been so surprised because ever since the, it'd been about two and a half years since I was diagnosed with cancer, mastectomy, chemotherapy, and every so often he would just look at me and he would go, who are you? And what have you done with Paula? And I couldn't really blame him because the before cancer Paula was very different than the after cancer Paula who was making choices and changing her values in a way that would have seemed crazy before. Time went by, <laughs> and I realized that everybody was sure that I was having a midlife crisis. I followed uh, leaving him with giving 90 days notice to my corporate job and buying a house. Everybody was really sure I was crazy, but it was the biggest leap of faith in my life. <laughs> So there I was, a few months later, looming mortgage payment, no job, no paycheck, no clients, very little money in the bank. <laughs> it was a time of uh, concern for me. The voices in my head were going crazy, telling me that there was no way anybody was going to hire me to do anything. You're going to be eating garbage and living in your car, it was a common refrain. And truthfully, at that point in time, the before cancer Paula would have turned tail and run back to corporate America. But somehow, my heart and the universe started opening doors for me. My previous employer became my first client. My colleagues started referring people to me and hiring me themselves. A nonprofit organization that I had been working for put me on contract to hire, do a couple of projects that were amazing that I never would have had a chance to do before. And somehow, over a fairly short period of time, that crazy midlife crisis, leaf of faith, had turned into a thriving business. And somehow, this whole listening to my heart instead of the crazy voices in my head, it was working. And I was kind of liking it. Things were going better than I'd ever possibly dreamed before cancer. And other things in my life were going pretty well, too. <laughs> Little Miss Paula, who no, nobody would ever want her again after she had a mastectomy, and who wanted to be married again anyway, met and married her soulmate, Chuck. He's here in the audience. And at the same time, I started becoming drawn to this newly emerging profession called life coaching. I wanted to teach cancer survivors who were ending treatment that it did not have to take three years to get their life back like it did me. So I went back to school, I got my credentials, I opened my company, What's Next for My Life, and I started doing workshops with cancer patients in cancer treatment centers. With my heart leading the whole way, there was no business plan. Ended up having two journals published, again, from my heart, not from my head. And more recently, I've started incorporating expressive arts in a process called soul collage into my practice, because those are the things that feed me and make me feel like, it, like my life is important and like it matters. I have to say that had I died when I was diagnosed with cancer at age 37, my life would have been pretty meaningless, and it certainly wasn't uh, exciting or passionate. I basically spent the first 37 years of my life doing what society thought I should do, what my parents and what my employers told me to do, and the one thing that was always missing from that is <laughs> what, what mattered to me? What did I want to do? What lit me up and made me feel like I was really, really alive? Everybody wants the same thing. As human beings, we want to love and be loved. We want to, have, to do things that, people, that make a difference in the world. We want peace and joy. And most of all, we want to feel alive. Why should it take facing death to gain permission to live? 
That's my question for you guys. There are 30 million cancer survivors out there in the world, and they have all been willing to take a leap of faith to say, I'm going to change my life, and I'm going to live it in a way that matters now. If I die on the way home tonight, my life will be complete, and I will have accomplished something. Cancer makes it urgent. What would make it urgent for you? Thank you.